In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about why eating two burgers is better for you than eating a burger and fries. We talk about Tonal's new valuation, $1.9 billion. Really? After you laid off 35% of your, of your workforce? I don't know. <laughs> we talk about inflation, what that means for us and you. Then we answered questions from four live callers. We talked about things like Olympic lifting in our MAPS programs. We talk about how to use Indian clubs and mace bells to improve mobility. Also, if you just want to listen to like clips of us saying cool stuff and not entire episodes, you can subscribe to Mind Pump Clips and just get the juicy bits. All right, here comes the show. All right, check this out. Eating two burgers is better for you than eating a burger and a large fry. Oh. Yeah. Say you know, what? Yeah, I like so, this tip. It's true. It's so true. Like if you go to fast food restaurant and you're looking to, and you just want to eat a bunch and you're like, I'm going to eat fast food and go for it. You're better off eating like two burgers than you are getting a burger and a, and a, and a large fry. I mean, go to like- Is this because uh, of the macro breakdown yes. with like protein versus- yes. and, and the calories are very similar. Like you get two burgers at, at five guy versus a burger and a large fry or whatever. You're going to get, the calories are going to be close, if not less with the burgers, but at least you get more protein. It's more satiating, better for muscle building. Mm. You get more vegetable oils, more starches, carbs, all that kind of stuff with the fries. Almost every Friday- uh, I enjoyed this exact meal uh, all during competition. Was my day that I allowed my two burgers that I would go eat, and that was the thing that Friday, was that pre contest. No fries. Yep, that was all. That was me cutting, getting ready for a show, everything. Wow. Uh, it, I could get it to fit in my macros if I eliminated the fries. If I had the fries, then I then I had a really hard time hitting my protein intake and keeping my calories low enough. Mm. But I could hit my calorie intake. It, it, and my protein intake if I, I chose two burgers versus the fries. Well, this brings up an interesting uh, point, which is on a scale of, um, I guess, uh, value with macros, there is, a, there is a scale when it comes to macros. Proteins and fats are essential, mm -hmm. meaning you have to consume some of them in order to survive. Carbohydrates are not essential, meaning you can have none of them and you'll be okay. Now, I'm not saying you should have no carbs. I'm just saying that on a scale of value, proteins and fats outweigh carbohydrates. Now, between proteins and fats, I would argue that proteins are more important, mainly because fats are easy to come by, and they are not a sati they don't produce as much satiety as protein. Protein produces a lot of satiety, meaning it keeps your appetite under control. It also contributes more to muscle building. And in my experience, when clients hit their protein targets, they always hit their fat targets. But if they aim for fat targets, they would always miss their protein targets. What do you estimate... Uh, calorie wise, you're getting out of like say a small or a large fry if, if that's like the direction you're. Well, it depends go. on how. Okay, so like if you go to like a uh, because that some of the things will estimate. Okay, yeah, three hundred to four hundred calories, but they're not counting the heavy hand. Guy. Yeah, have you ever been to Five Guys before? They like throw yeah. a bunch in the bag. <laughs> five Guys is notorious for oh, it. like yeah. if you order a large fry at Five Guys, you're a moron. I just gonna say that. Just put it like save your money. Right. Order the small because they give it's you end up in the bag. Anyways. They give no. They give you like if they 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 overfill. It's just like their thing, right? That they they've done. And then that. they just throw some in the bag. Yeah. Then they automatically throw a bunch in the bag. So like you're automatically getting a that's large. That's part of why I like them the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. No, I think that's. I actually Special think place. they. I think I don't know. So maybe somebody who works for Five Guys or has worked for Five Guys can like uh, either correct me or fill me in a little bit. But I would assume. That they are taught to do that because so many of the play I've every five guys I've ever gone to, they dump all the extra yeah. fries in the bag, and I think that and that's why because everybody goes, yeah. oh, you love you go to five guys, they give you so yeah. many extra fries. Yeah. On average, a a, a largish fry will be between 500, 600, 700 calories or more. Sometimes as much as a thousand calories. A burger, not maybe like a double, triple bacon with all kinds of you know sauces or whatever, but a burger is going to be about five to six hundred calories on average. So calorie wise. You're looking at an, somewhat of an even trade, okay? Of course, you can make it different if you go with the triple burger and all that stuff or a small fry or an extra large fry or whatever. But if you're if you're being reasonable, the calories are, are right around the same. The difference is the macros. Mm -hmm. And the macros from the burger are better because of the protein. The, protein well, you're, the point you're trying to make, I think, is a great point. Um, and, and the philosophy behind it, I think, is smart because – most people have a hard time hitting their protein targets. We never have. A, I never met a client in my life that said, "I, I just can't get enough carbs in my day." Yeah. <laughs> it's like this, never a problem. Yeah. So, and and if if I look at a, a meal from Five Guys or In and Out or wherever you, wherever you're at, wherever your favorite burger place is, the best part of the meal is the burger. Yeah. 
And so if I can go to a place like that and I can just make the, the change of, okay, I can't have fries because the fries are going to push my calories too high because of how much carbohydrates are in them in total calories. But I can go two burgers like that's a, and I could still make that fit into my macros. Or you could just, this, what I, this is what I often would do is I'd get a, a burger and then a burger, pro, what do they, what they call protein style? Protein so wrap. One yeah. where it's wrapped in lettuce, one that's normal. Mm -hmm. So I'm just getting the extra, you know, the extra protein, maybe less of the calories and the carbs. You know, what's funny about this, by the way, if you go with a bunch of regular people, so not fitness fanatics or whatever, you go a bunch of regular people to a fast food place and then they do their orders. So oh, I'll get a fry and a burger. I'll get a burger and fry whatever. And then you go up and you go, no, no, I just want two burgers. Yeah. Everyone's going to look at you like, man, we need a lot, bro. Going for it. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not realizing like actually yeah. it's about the same amount of calories. It's yeah, just, I noticed too. Like, I mean, it, you eat a French, like French fries. It's like potato chips. You know, oh. you, you make that comment before of like, it's so hard for you just to eat. Oh, I'll one. overeat. Yeah. If, every if, time. I'll, if, if five guys dumps half a thing, I'm eating all the fries. Yes. It's just, it's just, there, there's no way I'm going to have five fries and then stop. I'll stop eating a burger. If well, I'm yeah. Full. When you finish it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I'll stop when I'm full with the burger too. Yeah. With fries, the more you put in front of me, like if I go with my kids and I don't do this very often, but if I do, my daughter often will eat not all of her fries or my son will have, you know, one of these like yeah, eyes bigger than their that. stomach. Yeah. I'll eat all the extras, right? Yeah. But I, I I can stop. Protein's very satiety producing. Carbohydrates are not. Carbohydrates, eventually you get full, but they don't produce a lot of satiety. This is why studies show a high protein diet tends to lead to lower calories because it makes you eat less. You know, uh, speaking of macros and protein, um, I'm so in love with uh, our new partner, Creatures of Habit, and the the protagonist. Oh, bro, I love it. The, the how high of protein it, it has for oatmeal. Like this is the entire time that I competed. And by the way, I'm like working on him to try and make a similar formulation that I used to make. But his is far better than anything I ever did. Like he's obviously, he has the chef background. Yeah. So like it just, the texture of it's amazing. It tastes so good. And yeah. then it's got 30 grams of protein. The calories are still minimal on it. And it's super satiated. It tastes hella good. It's got the- they It's also, a perfect got, first it's meal. It's gluten-free, which is a huge one for me. I totally don't eat, oatmeal uh just because of that one fact alone so, and yeah. he used and he used vegan protein so for people that have a dairy I can eat it. yes so, i so. can't have dairy i can eat this it's pea protein which is a, a, a better vegan protein it's got better essential amino acid content it's got vitamin d3 omega-3 fatty acids probiotics digestive enzymes yeah so here's the th funny thing with me and oatmeal is I, i'll eat oatmeal sometimes but if i eat it too consistently it can sometimes make me bloat or make my energy crash a little bit. And I've checked with my blood sugar and it does affect it. Kind of Now, this is an individual thing. For most people, oatmeal doesn't do this. This one doesn't. And I think it's because of the protein and the omega-3s in there. Is it, it it's level. I feel God, very you know, level. that's so that's a, it'd be really interesting to test with our NutriSense the actual spike. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah you, are you watching Chris Ketlin's doing that right now? Are you, Where he eats different things. Yeah. Cause I believe, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's an investor. He's just partnered with NutriSense, but I've been seeing him like constantly posting about testing all these different foods. And he, I know he just tested oatmeal the other day. Mm -hmm. And then I think he had oatmeal and then he added like a scoop of whey protein and it totally made a difference on how his body- Protein makes a big difference. Mm. If you eat it first, especially if you eat it first, like right away, not like you eat it first and wait, just eat the protein first. You see a big difference in that. And for me, I've connected, like, like most people, I've connected the blood sugar rise and then drop. Man, I feel like crap when it drops. And then I get irritable and then I get cravings. So mm -hmm. I notice when that happens- I, I want to reach for more food. I want to take a nap. I don't feel good. Um, but if I have something more balanced, especially if I eat the protein first, it doesn't happen. Well, this was so awesome for me because I just got back from Hawaii and, um, you know, another one of our fav my favorite partners is our other partner, Magic Spoon. But, you know, the reality of like flying with boxes of cereal was like a little ridiculous. But <laughs> flying with seven packets of oatmeal easy. was easy. Easy. was super easy and all that boiling water in my room was super easy too. So I, I started every day off with that. 100% I'm going to bring that anywhere I travel. Yeah. 100%. Because I always bring protein powders. You guys know this. I'll bring protein powder with me, but mm -hmm. that's kind of boring. And I might want some carbs in my, and I want maybe a meal. Boom. Yeah. Super, super easy to yeah. do that. So, yeah. so you had it every morning, huh? Yeah. Every single morning I've had it. Have, I've, you, I've have Katrina tried, tried it? Have you given yeah, it? Yeah. Katrina's had it. Although she, the other day she's like, where's all the new, the old, the new oatmeal that you just got. And so I, I actually hit it in one of the cupboards that she can't reach. No, you, <laughs> that she can't reach. <laughs>
<laughs> you have a cupboard too high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have, we have cupboards that she <laughs> can't. Like a little kid. We do our kids. Do They're super tall. We have one, the ones above our oh. uh, where our refrigerator's at because we have vaulted ceilings. That's right getting there. me in trouble now, though, dude. Yeah. I'm realizing, like, oh, man, my kids are, like, getting taller now. This is a real issue. Yeah. Dude. Everything used to be so nice because you just put it up on that tall shelf. Dude, I have, like, I have my ice cream that I hide. There's certain foods. You hide I, you yeah. hide food from your wife? <laughs> I do. I do. I do. It's, it's not just from her. It's from anybody. It's just, like, the I, Who's gonna eat it? It's you and her. Well, like we have people come to our house a lot. We have oh, a lot okay. of family and oh, friends true. and stuff like yeah. that. We just had family stay at our house for a week while we were while we were away in oh, Hawaii and stuff like that. True. So I like certain things that I'm like super like I, that are part of my routine, right? That I like, or I or like for my ice cream, which is not part of my routine, but it's like if I, I keep a couple in there and if I want it and I'm in a mood for it because I haven't had it in a while, I better be able to so, find it and I'll be pissed if I can't so find it. So have you done this funny. yet? I'm sure, I guarantee Justin has because his kids are older. I don't, I don't want to see if you've done this already, Adam, where you'll get a food, you don't want your kid to eat because maybe it's not healthy for them or whatever or you know it's not going to be good for their balance. Yeah. But so you have to hide. So we have a pantry and in the pantry, we'll have the occasional snack. Okay, the occasional whatever, and I don't necessarily want Aurelius to eat it. So sometimes you'll see Jessica or I will will quietly open the door and then go inside of it, close the door, and we're in the pantry eating the snack He's inside. I'm like, what am I doing? It. I'm hiding my own, my own house. Yeah, dude. Have you done that? Oh, of course, I've done that. Yeah, <laughs> dude. So yeah, I'll I'll take like labels from something else and I'll slap it in front. I don't know if you guys have done that. What? Yeah, dude. That's so yeah. <laughs> like yogurt. Wait I put on an ice cream. <laughs> So, so they don't yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> so that way it's just mine. Cause <laughs> dude, I never get it. They always eat it. Like we're fighting all the time. Me and my boys like over food now. And they're like at that age where they just consume, you know, everything. And then Courtney gets irritated because I'm like, I'll eat something that like they're expecting to have for breakfast in the morning, especially if it's like, you know, some kind of cereal magic spoon or like whatever. And like, I will eat it because I'm just like, I gotta have something some, cause I'm feeling snacky. And then the well, next morning, I just hear, like, not only does Everett, like, yell at me, you know, from, but then, of course, you ate all of it? I'm like, yeah, it's in my house. It's bro, my house. You just made the best commercial of all time, bro. I'm feeling snacky. <laughs> 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 I love that. I was feeling snacky. My yeah. dad, so my dad did that. So you know what my dad used to do? So he would buy yeah. ice cream. Yeah. And he, he, my dad worked hard seven days a week, always made time to come to dinner. And then after dinner, he would eat. Something, ice cream or something in front of the television and watch yeah. TV. And two things would make my dad just go through the roof and explode with anger. One, can't find the remote control. So if the kids oh, yeah. misplace the remote control and my dad's looking for it, at some point he's turning couches upside down and chairs looking for it and just going crazy. Yes. So that's one. The other one is he would open the freezer to get his ice cream and it would be gone because uh -huh. the kids got to it. Yeah. So he learned a, he learned a trick. So are you guys familiar with Spumoni flavored ice cream? So, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, uh -huh. That's like, it's old man ice cream. Okay. Uh -huh. It's got like nuts and fruit and like weird, like it's stuff nasty. In it. Yeah. So my dad would buy spumoni cause yeah. he knows we wouldn't touch it. Yep. And then when it was done, if he got like Rocky he, he road, kept it. yes, your dad got, like, is on Rocky that road, level, dude. He would, he would fill it up with the other one. <laughs> yes. Close the top and we wouldn't exactly touch what it. I do. We wouldn't touch it. Yeah. So we, and I remember I figured it out once I opened it up cause I was desperate. I'm like, Oh, ice cream. I don't care. I opened it up. I'm like, <laughs> Wait, Rocky, that's Rocky road. Rocky road. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, you smart. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't tell the other That's kids. That's the so. move, dude. No, yeah. I totally, I totally hide my stuff. Like this. it's only a couple of things. Like that, this this oatmeal. I'm on this kick right now that I want it every single morning, right? And I want the flavor that I want at the time that I want. So I'm just like particular about it. So I'll be so pissed if I get up and it's like missing, you know. And then the same thing goes for like my ice cream. I can only get it from one place. They're only open so often, like, or I have to get it shipped to the house. Like it's a whole ordeal for me to get this like special ice cream, and it only comes in the little pints or whatever. And so I always buy like four or five. And then I took, we have a deep freezer and I hide it in a certain parts in, in the deep freezer buried underneath like the butcher box meat and stuff like that. So, and, so I know if I get one of those moments where I'm like, oh, you know what I want right now? I want my ice cream. I know I can go there and I can go find it. Oh so, my God. My son's not old enough yet to figure that stuff out. So that'll be an interesting battle in oh, my yeah. house. <laughs> Sometimes it makes you real angry. And it's like, oh, I got to check myself. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I guess he's like helping my, my cravings, you know? Yeah. Thanks, yeah. kids. Yeah. Like, thanks for like regulating down. Dad, I appreciate it. Courtney's like, kids, go yeah. eat all the ice cream. That's having totally too much. It's inspiring. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee it. Hey. All right, everybody, here's the giveaway for today's episode. Maps OCR, Obstacle Course Racing. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you won. 
Maps OCR. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Two workout program bundles are 50% off. We got the skinny guy bundle, which includes all these programs, a lot of stuff. And then we have the fit mom bundle that includes all these other programs, also a lot of stuff. Both 50% off if you're interested. Click on the link at the top of the description below to get the discount. All right, here comes the show. So, I, hey, so did you guys see the, okay, so remember Tonal? when they had that first valuation dude and we all kind of railed on it. And then the owner came on, we had a nice conversation. Great guy. Yeah. And although we still disagreed, it was a great conversation. Love them. I think the direction they're going is the right one or whatever. Anyway, they're, 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 they're getting, they're doing another round and they got, they're asking for evaluation or that evaluation at one, what was it? 1.6? 1 1.9. It was 1 1.6 when we called it out. Okay. 1.6 as... during the pandemic, the height of everybody getting at home equipment. Right. They laid off 35% of their employees the pandemic demand has dropped considerably, and now it's 1.9. I don't know. I wow. can't. I can't. Where's that? Yeah. I didn't care. They're, two, they're tying it all equate. to the, the, member, the membership growth. It has 100 million to. they have a, a, a year in uh, reoccurring memberships. 100 million a year. Is that 100 million? 100 huh? million, which is not, which is great. Oh, so that's sneeze at. No, not at all. No. I don't know how profitable they are, though, because of the cost of acting. They have huge athletes, <clears> right? <throat> signed on with them. I think Serena Williams just signed on with oh, them. Oh, they have LeBron James. Uh, LeBron James. Yeah, no, they have a bunch of big athletes that are that are endorsing them right now. Yeah. I mean, what do you guys, what do you guys think? I, I'm still, I'm still, I, it's really hard to get me bought in. Bro, to, look at this. It's a really equipment. cool product. Doug, look up, look up uh, uh, Peloton sure about CEO, that CEO leaves or something. So, I mean, no, these companies are, these companies are hurting right now. I don't care how you, how you spin it and try and draw it up right now. Dude, just because somebody's got uh, committed to it, because they, they you have to sign a one year contract with them. So telling me you have a one year contract uh, and a hundred million dollars—that's true. Guaranteed coming in doesn't mean anything to me until that's true. until that's it. wait a year. Or yeah, two. wait a year. It's has it. We haven't even been a year beyond the pandemic cooling down. Mm. Like people, there. I mean, just less than a year ago, people were still scared to death to go inside of a gym. So wait until that dust settles first, yeah. and then we'll talk about. I mean, it's going to be an expensive coat hanger, dude. Yeah. It, that's a, or a laundry dryer like that everybody you know when people have those all yeah. i had a <clears throat> and i you know I, I i don't know if i shared this on the show or not but i i think i shared it in an interview that i did that i wanted to clarify i think where, where my passion comes from with like tools like this because they were like oh you know what it was it was uh, jennifer cohen jennifer cohen her and i were talking on the phone and she's like, why do you shit on every investment I send your way? Because <laughs> she always, like, I, I love Jen, and she's uh, she's an investor herself, right? And so she'll always send stuff over. And I don't even waste your guys' time because I know how you guys will feel about it. And she'll send me over, hey, I got this, you know, it, it's a fitness tool. It's always like a fitness yeah. tool, right? Like the, the axle bar, like all these things. Like, right. and, I, and I think all of them are cool, it's right? The Frogger machine. And she's always like, why do you, why, why do you always shit on these things? And I'm like, you know what? I should, I should probably clarify like why I'm so quick to shit on them. I said, I'm not a fan of these things because one, I know it's not the solution for 95% of the people. Like yeah. it's not, it, it's not the missing piece that is going to help. It's not because we don't have the right tool. Yeah. And I said, yeah. you know, the thing that comes to mind, I was very close to my best friend's mom. Like she was like another mom to me. She passed away a few years ago. Um, and we were really, really close. And I remember, and so she's known me since I was a child, right? So ever since I was in like third grade, all the way to adulthood, I obviously I got into fitness as I got older and I, she used to have this room in this lot. It was a big loft. And the entire thing was literally uh, an infomercial from the last 20 years. So it's like a gym, but not with like weights. It's like, no, it's got the, the, you know, the, the humps, the, the hump machine, the, yeah. you know, the, the, the Nordic track, the, the Tony I mean, little one, the yeah, ab thing, the gazelle, the Tony, gazelle, like the yeah. yeah, everything, bro. She had everything Thigh master you know and she struggled with weight her in her entire life and i remember like finally like getting to a place where i you know had the confidence and and probably knowledge to be able to tell her like this is not the answer and of course she still would still fall in that trap even having her son who was into health and fitness and stuff like that um I couldn't get through to her, and so it really frustrated me. Obviously, she passed, and 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 still, it was, just it's not going to revolutionize fitness. No, it just isn't. It's it, not. No, and you may get none you, of those tools are. No, and what you may get if you do a good job, you may catch a a, a trend or fad, but then the fad fades. Uh, like you know, Thigh Master, which is literally a piece of crap. It's literally a piece of crap, right? So it's the highest it's the, spring. It's the highest grossing piece of exercise equipment of all time. Right. Yeah. Now, nobody buys a thigh master anymore, right? And it didn't change anything. It didn't solve any problems. It's like the pet rock. Y yeah. <laughs> How much different is it, really? Yeah. It's so all marketing. It, it And so it just doesn't solve anything. So when someone pitches an, a, a fitness tool idea and says, this is going to be a billion-dollar 
business. Well, when it's we, hard for well, me to buy. One of the things that we do on the show is we're always trying to to help the individual figure out the root cause of why they have struggled reaching their health and fitness goals. Right. And I can, with one hundred percent certainty, tell you that everybody listening, the the root cause of why they have not achieved their health and fitness goals has nothing to do with the tool that they are using has everything to do with behaviors and your relationship with right. exercise, your relationship with food. That is- The, the best tools already exist. Right. So strength training, first of all, you don't need equipment. You can use just use your body, but there's free weights, which there's yet to do it. There's yet a, a piece of equipment invented that'll trump just a pair of dumbbells and a, and a bench in terms of versatility and who can work for and all that stuff, right? There's some equipment's better for some things, but generally speaking, there's nothing. Cardio. Right, nothing is get, you can you don't need equipment to do cardio. You could literally walk, um, and there's cardio machines and all the different ones kind of do the same thing. Flexibility, mobility, you don't need equipment for that. So it's not a tool thing, especially not one of these fad tools. You know. Mm -hmm. Now I will say this, okay, because I want to be, I also want to be fair. Um, it's it, it's it's pretty cool to use. You know, I like it. I mean, Tonal I mean, is smooth. It's, it's a cool. smooth cable machine for upper body. It's really cool. It adjusts resistance. If you're a fitness fanatic and you want to add it to your repertoire of equipment, I could see some some value there. But I don't see it. So you know that changing I, the general, you know how, how the general person yeah. views. Fitness. Out of all of us, I think I use it the most, or I I used it the most. Yeah. You know why I don't use it? You don't see me using it hardly at all right now. It's just a it's it's too much effort to go use it for something so basic and simple. Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, like I, I so you could just, I, you could just so select right. When I machine. first when I first started mm. talking about it and I first used it because of course we got it in here and I'm like I'm gonna use it and apply it. Like I was like, man, I, this is really cool for upper body, like bench press and shoulder press and some yeah. some exercises on there. I really like. I love the, the the variable resistance I can do on it. So thought that was really cool, very interactive, all this cool neat features. <clears throat> but after that kind of newness of being neat and trying it all it out kind of wore off. off. Yeah. And by the way, since day one, I've said it, it absolutely sucks for lower body. It's a piece of shit for lower body. Mm. I don't care what you say. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> for lower body. Do we have an email of them trying to sponsor us? <laughs> Make sure that we don't have that. That's a clip, right? I there. mean, that's the truth, right? For just lower body. It We're just honest. Yeah, it absolutely yeah. sucks. Upper body, it's actually pretty cool. Yes. But the reason why you never see me, it's just, it's too much work to go do a tricep push down. I can move right over to the free free motion machine and, and move and, the pin. Yeah, move the pin. Two seconds. I'm I'm going on it. It's like go. I have to I have to navigate through all the digital stuff to set it all up to set it on yeah, the resistance that true. I want to go to the the character or the person I want to show me. It's like yeah. it's too much. Yeah, that's true. It's too much for something so basic and simple. You know what's what funny I need. about that is uh, the tech person mind because they're so entrenched and like we can always innovate, innovate, innovate our way through that problem so what you're presenting is like a problem of simplicity so there are their thoughts around like watch this happen is going to be to walk in and have um you know your whole data and everything on like a, a wearable so that way you go up to the machine and then it just like connects with that right amount and you just go right away. but it's like to be able to set that up is going to take so much time and effort and and anyway it's it's just kind of funny to me that like we try to to innovate our way through what is already a very simple project. I mean, I see I see it as a you know, will it be here in ten years or not? I don't know. I I, I don't I don't know if it will be. If it is here in ten years, still, uh, it will be it'll be a a niche product that the the ultra wealthy have as an in addition to their fitness routine. You know what like I, think? I see the, like our buddy, Brendan, who is a major investor and a, obviously a, a major defender of this company, uh, has one and he promotes it and uses it all the time. But that dude is a super fitness dude already. And like he incorporates that into his routine. Yeah. He also goes to orange theory and does all these other things and stuff like that. And so I could see like, if I had it at my house, maybe I would, would hop on it. Maybe, mm. maybe, I you mean, know, I use my PR. I use my PRX. What would use my PRX way yeah, more? It's barbells and yeah. dumbbells. You know what I think might last ten years is the technology, the resistance, the way that they they create resistance with the tech. Yeah. That will probably I dig last. it. Yeah, it's cool. but I mean, I can I can tell you right now, fitness equipment wise, the revolutions that I've experienced in the last twenty five years, and none of them. And I'm gonna I'm literally gonna say things that changed how gyms look. Okay, so they went they went nationwide now worldwide, and they still didn't move the needle. When it came to the average person, I remember when the elliptical got invented. Okay, I remember that like it was yesterday. It was all treadmills and and stationary bikes and stairmasters. All of a sudden, Precore comes out with an elliptical, and now ellipticals are one of the most popular pieces of cardio equipment in gyms. So I remember when that happened. I remember when plate loaded 
equipment, not mm. barbells, but plate loaded machines like Hammer Strength came out. That revolutionized machines completely. Before that, it was either selectorized or free weights. Mm -hmm. Then Hammer Strength comes in and that revolutionized that market. Neither one of them moved the needle. You know what moved the needle more than both of them? CrossFit, of all things. CrossFit moved the needle more because it got people to do these basic exercises that been around for hundreds of years, barbell squats, deadlifts, cleans, presses. And he's that built kind of the community. Low, That's barrier, right. low barrier to entry too. Super low barrier to entry. It was, it was about behaviors. They, they tapped into the community. They tapped into something that really worked with some people. And that rev that did more to move things that, to move the needle than than both ellipticals and. and I wonder how many <clears throat> for it to be a very successful viable company uh, for uh, for an extended period of time. I wonder what what the run rate as far as like what they need to have because what I would predict would happen is at a, in very soon if if it hasn't reached already because I would predict that it's it's reached kind of its peak right now and if anything you're going to see either a Agreed. slow drop off. Or just a, a a flat line of exchange of dropping yeah. off and adding new Agreed. like new people. So I think all the advertising, all the promotions are doing with people, everything like that will continue to introduce new people who have never tried it, used it into it. You're gonna get a drop off. But at the same yeah. time, the same at the same rate that they'll be falling off. And I guess the question I would have is that you know what does the company need to retain mm -hmm. for it to be a, a long term vibe? Because I mean you got a hundred million dollars a year and and that's no that's not to I mean that's it isn't but that doesn't mean that they're profitable. I mean you've seen some of these companies. Well, tech companies. I mean yeah, if they're, if they're spending a hundred million in, in partnerships and advertising and, and, and also, equipment and everything. Else. Yeah, and also the equipment. I wonder what the margins are, if any. Mm. Right to make them and and then to deliver them because the margins are probably razor thin because their their goal is to be, get the reoccurring revenue. That would be my guess. My guess would be that they look at the equipment. Well, from say, everything I've seen, small. yeah, in that in that industry, that's the the hardest thing is like yeah, you do have like a very slim margin, uh, you know, of profitability there. And so I think their angle is really it's the reoccurring yes. subscription, which to me is that's the most the annoying part, right? Because <laughs> like I just want the cool machine. I don't want any of this like, but well. Somebody doesn't know how to do all the movements yeah. and all that. That's kind of the pitch. It is and it isn't though. I mean, both Peloton and Tonal uh, and Mirror, all those those tools, they actually charge a lot for the actual piece too. They do, they but do, I don't know if that's a big margin. I mean, it's expensive. I mean, you're talking about like what's what's it's sophisticated? Uh, what, well, thirty thirty four hundred bucks for the Tonal. Yeah. Is that what it is? I think so. That's right expensive, there. bro. It is, but I wonder if I mean, here's the we bought that. Okay, we bought that free motion machine. Yeah. Okay, which basically does everything that does with with the simplicity of moving the pen, right? You yep. can move it's the arms. Used, but it's like fifteen hundred or something, right? It costs us a thousand dollars. Now yeah. we bought it used. Now it takes up used. more space and all that. Though, like too. brand new, there's three to five thousand. So I've looked in. How much those. is a pair of dumbbells? Uh, adjustable dumbbells in a bench cost? Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if we're, we're, I'm trying to compare something that's very yeah, similar. Sure, sure. Yeah, like very, very similar to that cable is, machine. A, is a, would be a cable machine, yeah. right? It's like almost identical to that without the tech, right? Yeah. So I mean that's the that's a big hurdle. If it costs you more to like you know, if you could build yeah. that for less and it's more and it's more compact and like yeah. the, and, and it's as good, like then you got it, then you have something that could rival that. Then why would you buy a free motion? Right. Right. Because now you you would actually have a bigger market you open up. Like if you're now I'm a gym, like I'm a big gym chain. Oh wow. Instead of us having free motions, we'll put a couple of these you know, these on the on the wall, these tonals or mirrors on the wall. But I mean, not if they cost yeah. twice as much yeah. as as the free motion machine would cost and, yeah. and, the, and can't do anything more than they i mean as far as the the basic movements on it i mean you could do more tech wise on there but yeah i don't i don't know if it's going to be around that long what did you look up what peloton what happened with peloton ceo God. yeah he uh well he sold i think 50 million dollars worth of his shares yeah he's out and, and he's mm -hmm. out yeah <laughs> what are the shares are like 10 bucks right now Remember the peak and during the well, pandemic? what happened? Yeah, they had some some something happened that well, was like a, a their demand dropped considerably, and then they were first they couldn't meet demand. Yeah, then they tried to meet demand by increasing. The I thought supply. there was some bad information yeah, that came was, out about the, an accident. The, or something. the person that got hurt. Or then killed. there was something like that. Yeah, yeah, like a kid got killed. You know what it is about Tonal? Why they're getting these valuations is that they're pitching investors like they're a tech company. That's why. They're not pitching them as a fitness company. I don't think they'd get a valuation if it wasn't for the data, so the tech. That could, well, the, you know. So there's the other point to it then. Like, if are they going to be able to sell this data that they're they're acquiring from everybody? I don't know. Because like, that would be valuable from the company perspective. Yeah, but that would only be valuable if they were to be able to keep those people working consistently out. working out. Yeah, And true. that's going to be the, the – what and so – that's the selling the point. The selling point yeah. is around the tech, and you're right. That's yeah. the reason why I can get the valuation that it's getting this, like, 10x valuation yes. or whatever, right? So – that is the selling point, but what 
they need from that. And that was the argument that I had when we had Tone on here. And I think the argument that I got into with Brendan is that you still need these people to use this super consistently yes. in order for that data to be very useful. Yep. Mm -hmm. If they if they have at all similar behaviors to what we've seen with humans in exercise and gyms, eighty five percent drop off. <laughs> yeah, then that that information is not going to be accurate. Any it's going to be all over the board. Any and all exercise forms have a similar drop off rate. Yes. Any and all exercise forms. Now you know what changes that is if you have a good trainer. Mm -hmm. If you have a good trainer, if you have a good instructor the drop-off rate drops considerably, but it's still pretty big. That's why I always tell trainers and coaches it's a hard job because even if you crush, you're still going to fail more than you succeed, but you're going to do a lot better than when a person is on the It's own. also back to your point why CrossFit was so successful is that it's led by a-, a Correct. A, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. All right. Speaking of uh, studies and data, so this is really cool. I saw this post and I looked at the data and it's actually true. They compared creatine to um, antidepressants for mild to moderate depression- Creatine actually outperforms in some cases for wow. depression. Really? Yes. So I've known that creatine has uh, antidepressive effects. Yeah. But in many populations, it's actually more effective than taking a a a, a drug that's like an antidepressant. Actually, more effective at treating depression. So for somebody who's now you obviously don't go off your antidepressants and start taking creatine because you heard this on Mind Pump. I'm not a doctor, but you could safely most people could safely take creatine regardless. And notice if you if you see a difference in your in your moods. Wow, because we knew it had like a cognitive boost, right? If you're deficient, but uh, yeah, I didn't know it had antidepressant qualities to it. As yeah, well. well, ATP is the energy that fuels every cell in your body, right, through the mitochondria. So you increase ATP, you have more energy. You're mm -hmm. probably going to feel better, sure, um, physically, which can give you measurable, you know, somewhat measurable effects on depression. I find yeah, that this really is the wellness supplement, bro. It? I tell you what, I've had people. Uh, I'm having people DM me. So, what do we predict when we first started the podcast seven years ago? Creatine is going to be eventually marketed as a wellness supplement, a health supplement. It's going to be marketed to the elderly. It's going to be marketed for cognitive function. Sure enough, people are sending me now supplements that are pure wellness and health, not muscle building, not performance. Yeah. Pure like improve longevity, improve health. They all have creatine in them. <laughs> It's starting to happen already. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I'm, I'm feeling depressed Somewhat these days. I guess, no, you're not. Huh? Yeah, dude. Why? I mean, the, it, bro, it's inflation, dude. Oh, bro. <laughs> fucking, Did you see the like, numbers? Keep, like, when are we going to flatten this curve, dude? Oh, <laughs> it's it's fucking, two more weeks. Just, yeah, I think we just signed a new policy that will really bro, help this time, I think. No, dude. So they, it, it, it looked like it was slowing down, but then new numbers came out, and it's it actually is accelerating again. So it's not it's not looking good, and it's boot bro in some countries in Europe. Oh, darn. Europe I believe, is in I a believe bad position as, as we're recording this, and I don't think I've seen it in the news yet. I don't know if you've been on enough, but it we were supposed to come out with the the increased uh, rate again. I think it's supposed to go up seventy five basis points. You know, historically, and that, and that what and that will again affect mortgage rates, and we we are going to see. And I, I wish I I, gotta, I would go back on mind pump and see see what I predicted at the end of this year was. But it's we're gonna hit north of seven, dude. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be seven to eight percent interest rates. When less than a year ago, we were in the three and a half. Yeah, yeah. you know, well, crazy. Historically, the way that on a thirty year, the only way that inflation has gotten crushed is when they raise the rate higher than inflation. So when they when they when they when the is that true? Yeah, I didn't know that. They they rate they have to rate, they have to really break the back of inflation with high hikes. Which That's is, how they yeah painful. Who was it that did it during during Reagan's administration? Was it Volcker? Who raised? Maybe you could see what they raised the rate to, but it, I mean, they had to raise the shit out of it, and it caused a small recession. So Reagan gets into office, and one of his <clears throat> so the part, promises okay, was to lower inflation. Okay, so the part of me that that I don't understand completely, and why, why it was already weird that we took this long to do it, and then now that and we have this information, and we have that historical data that I actually wasn't familiar with. Why would we not? push those rates like why, why why did we do that three months ago why would why would we not instead of 75 basis points why would we not go i mean why are they doing it slow because it'll cause a recession yeah. and we're in political well, i mean but season. isn't that necessary to get us out of inflation that's what that's what I a mean, lot of economists will say i mean yeah it's i mean yeah. it's it's what does that say there uh <clears throat> yeah so inflation had gone up to uh 17.6 percent <sighs> and it would near 20 percent at times in 1981 Wow. Yeah. So what did the higher interest, what did the interest rates go up to? I'm trying to see that. I'm not sure. Oh, it's 13.7%. Oh, 13.7. Yeah. I mean, I mean, do you know how much house, but what mortgages were after that? They were in the teens. Wow. I, my first mortgage was. 
Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I had a, I had a, I did have a blended rate because um, I had put three percent down back mm. then, um, <clears throat> which was a total mistake. It was a five one arm or whatever. No, no, no. It was a, it was a, it was a thirty year, but I you couldn't do you can't do a traditional thirty year and put less than twenty percent. Oh, down. I see. The bank will not will not uh, lend you more more than eighty percent of the money. So what you'd have to do is you get a loan for 80% and then you get another loan for the 20%. Oh, I see. And, it, and because- So one of them was adjustable? Yeah. Well, no, not one of them wasn't adjustable either. It had a fixed rate too, but the fixed rate was high. The fi so the first one was a decent rate at nine, it was 9.5% and then I had a 13%. Oh, so I had a I blended see. rate of like 11 point wow. something on the, the entire mortgage. Wow. So yeah, my so, very first mortgage was like that high. Yeah, because we had really bad inflation in the 70s and then Reagan wanted to- stop that, gets into office and they raise inf interest rates, inflation goes down, but we go into recession. L then we came out of it and that's, you know, of course Reagan got uh, reelected. Did it say what they raised, the, what they did, Doug, on that? Yeah, I, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I don't know if, uh, if it's- But the problem is we have debt. We have a huge amount of debt we won't be able to service if we raise mm -hmm. it too high. Um, and I don't know if- It's any almost like we, I mean, we. it's like the rip, the, like we're- yeah. slowly peeling the bandaid off right now and it's like uh, it, yeah. Yeah. i feel like it'd be less painful just, uh. well you know what the, <laughs> the what the problem is is that if you if you have money and you save your money which is old wisdom right old wisdom is spend less than you make save the money if you save your money you're losing value at a at a rate that's ridiculous right now meaning mm -hmm. 100,000 dollars in the bank today next year is worth you know 10,000 dollars less for example because you can buy $10,000 less worth of goods and services. So your only strategy is starting to become aggressively invest. Mm -hmm. Try to find assets that will beat inflation. And as inflation Before goes the interest up- interest rates get too crazy. People right? have to get more risky with yeah. their investments, you know? So it's uh, it's kind of crazy. So I think it's going to inflate the the asset market. You're going to see more assets explode. That's the part to me that I, I'm like, I can't wrap my brain around right now is that- um, you know, can the can this housing market and stock market could it can it keep running? Like, of course we're we're seeing this the correction, but is the correction going to be like this little minor correction and then it's going to start mm -hmm. to rise again? Because we are not going to feel the full effects of this this new what's the new one six hundred billion? Is yeah, six hundred billion. Like, just like it, it I, I don't even it's think supposed we're, to reduce inflation. I though, don't right? think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Printing more money and never reduces. Right? It's the funniest yeah. thing ever. I believe in Santa Claus too. No, yeah, yeah. No, I mean we're. I don't even think we fully have felt the trillions of dollars that we're just printing. No. We're 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 still trying to work through that process. Just wait till they pay off twenty thousand dollars worth of people's loans. Uh, it's just the student loans. Weird. That's gonna, that's it's have an it's too. weird. It's really, I think, really reshaping not only our economy but even like our culture and how uh, you're going to view owning a home and stuff. I mean, what it, that, that's like like the, one of the primary focuses for somebody is like the part of the American dream, right? You get your own own your house. Yeah, own your house, mm -hmm. get married, have two and a half kids, whatever. And it's going that's going to change. I mean, if it keeps going this way, it's going it's already moving out of like if you live anywhere in California and you and it, it, anywhere near the Bay Area or so like that, like you have to make a million dollars. You to own be able to, nothing and be happy, Adam. It's fine. That, that's what they yeah. said. That's what it's moving towards, though. Yeah, it's I don't know about the be happy part, but okay. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know what though? There is some good news because there's new. There are new products and new ways to invest that are getting introduced in the market all the time that allow people. For example, in the past, if you wanted to invest in in companies. Uh, be a privately, credit, credit investor, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Plus, yeah. yeah, or you have to have a million dollars worth of assets or something like that, yeah. right? To be an angel investor. Well, now there's there's a company called Start Engine. There, you, you can go on there. In fact, there's a company we work with that we invested in called CareMinder that you can invest in. So I suggest the audience. In fact, we talked about this on a la on a previous episode, so you can look into this. But yeah. if you go to startengine.com forward slash CareMinder, you can look this up. But Start Engine itself lists all these companies that are raising money from investors before they go public, before they're on the stock exchange, before they get bought out or whatever. And it's cool because you're just a regular yeah. Joe. You, you don't have, have to be, be a, a major yeah, angel investor or anything. No, you could go on this one with CareMinder. I think the minimum is 300 bucks. Yeah. For 300 bucks, you can own a piece of this company. It's and, and when they exit, if they do exit, the payback can be pretty good. So for people who want to invest to fight inflation, there's more and more tools that are available now to people. Is that, you know? are you sure that's still going? I know they were closing that round out soon. When is this that? is going to close yeah, out. Yeah, at the end of the month. I think the okay. 29th. So this is up. it. 
This After is After this, it. you can't mm-hmm. invest in CareMinder anymore on there. Yeah. Okay, but Start Engine, there's other companies on there as well. Yeah, no, that's really cool that there. I know there's a couple other companies besides Start Engine that do it now. It's, there's, I think, two or three out there that actually uh, open it up, and the fact that you can only you can be as little as three hundred dollars in there. Although I would caution the average person or you know potential investor. Yeah, if that, you just have three hundred bucks to your name. Yeah, angel should, yeah. angel investing is uh, extremely high risk, right? It's much mm-hmm. higher uh, risk. It's not the conservative way of going. But I mean, if you're somebody who's like gambling, like I do, if you gamble mm-hmm. on sports and stuff like that, like I'd much rather like that's my attitude now is like. Okay, yeah, I'd sports bet three to five hundred dollars on a weekend of football and stuff like that. Like, I'd rather put that in a, a company that I I believe in or with that and like ride that out. So, so I'm I'm much when it comes to investments, I can be pretty conservative, right? I don't like I can be risky with business, but you know, with my own business. But when it comes to money, I invest. I tend to be more conservative. And one thing I found for myself is investing in companies that I believe in because it allows me to ride the ups and downs. Like if I just invest in a company, everybody's like, oh, you got to invest in this company. It's really cool. And I don't, I don't really believe in them. And I watch them drop and it stresses me out. But if yeah. I like believe in what they're doing, then I tend to be like, well, cool. I know it's going to do well because I understand what they're doing. Plus right. it's a tangible thing. You yeah. Know? And it's uh, that, that's always been my concern with a lot of the digital stuff out there that people are investing in and putting their money towards because of the, you know, the waves of the highs, mm-hmm. you know, that it goes through. And so, yeah, in terms of being somewhat more on the, like conservative side, I lean more in that direction on real tangible companies or real tangible um, like properties or or things. Right, right. Well, I agree with you, Sal, about the like having this like belief. Because here's the thing I know it's uh it's a fact. Okay, if we percentage wise, the reality is that you know we're we're going to be what nine or ten companies now that we will be invested in. The reality is that probably less than half of them. Will will make it big and be and sell off and be successful and will make make money off it for sure, right? But the fact that all of them, I'm I'm super pro the business and I yeah. and I love the business allows me not to worry about the day to day or whatever like that is. I'm always going to be rooting for them and I hope they're they end up being the one that makes mm-hmm. it. And so I'm not I'm I'm not like uh, freaking out every emotional mm-hmm. dip or whatever on it. And I'm constantly rooting. So I think that is an important thing. You should <laughs> probably should not invest in something that because somebody else told you to. It should be something that you're like, oh, I believe in that what they're doing. I think I mean that's when we first when I first heard about Luna, what got me so excited about that was my best friend is a physical therapist. We lived together for almost 10 years. And every night he'd come home from his job. I'd come over my job. We'd share everything about, and we're young, right? We're in our early twenties. So you're so excited about everything you're doing. And we'd have all these discussions around our industry. And so I got to learn a lot about the physical therapy industry and all the, the, the bottlenecks and challenges that they have. And when I heard what Luna was doing, I was so fascinated by like, oh my God, that is a super disruptor, especially when you can disrupt a space like that and everybody wins because mm-hmm. that doesn't happen a lot, right? Like, sure, there's there's companies that come and disrupt and it's like, oh, the company wins or the consumer wins. But for everybody that's that's touched by that business is actually winning from that excites me about the company or else we wouldn't be messing with it. Yeah, right? I'm, you know what I'm trying to look for right now? I wanted to read this to you guys, but I'm trying to find it. Oh, here it is. Did you guys know that NASA, what a bad idea, Justin, you're going to love this. NASA went out and asked their community to name the mission to Uranus. <laughs> Shut your face. So they're going to send a probe <laughs> to Uranus. This is a, are you setting a joke up right now? No, no. No, that's a real thing. Yeah, and they're like, you know, what are some what are some names that we can, you know, what are what are some good names from from the <laughs> from the from our fans or whatever? Yeah. that we can name this. So here's some of the ones that they came up oh, with. Yeah, let me hear some of these. So one of them was an advanced new Uranus space mission. So that's anus. <laughs> <laughs> the next one was, was better Uranus telemetry tracking, but. Nice. And the, yeah. Good uh, acronym. Planetary yeah. orbital observation probe, poop. Mm. So it just, it's like, mm-hmm. man, when you ask the public to do this. <laughs> yeah, what do you think that you're going to get? Yeah. I, think you get the U- all day I think the UK did, I think, I think it was UK. They, they, there's new Navy ship. And yes. They want to name. I think I brought this. So yeah, I was, I was in Bodie Scotland. Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, Bo- Bodie McBoaterson. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because. They had to name it that because that's England, what the public wanted. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like they had this, this naval ship that they were docking or whatever and. Uh, they're asking all the local like Scots like what they wanted to name it. So, you know, they were just like totally messing with them and like wrote in and voted for Bodie McBoaterson instead of like some like cool- Bodie McBoatface. It was Bodie McBoatface. McBoatface. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so that's the official name of the boat. So they just went with that. It's like, yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's the public. Pretty funny. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's like the new move now is to like uh, to troll people in like at, at mass size like that, right? That's well, like that board ape yacht club thing that we talked yeah. about. Dude, like, if you ask the internet something, like yeah. you be careful, bro, because the internet will band together to troll the shit out of you. <laughs> Are they really going to Uranus? Though? You know, like because yeah. I know. <laughs> Not I, mine. You but. just admitted it. Yeah. No. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but I mean, because Mars is is the big push, right? That's yeah. the one that's like Elon and everybody's getting on in terms of like trying to get actual physically there. So this is just like a probe that's. Uh huh. Okay. Apparently. Yeah, probe, they're probe yeah, probing your anus. It's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard, dude. It's like, if I was inside. in junior high right now, it would be just it's terrible. Just, <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you guys continuing to watch the streaming wars? Are you guys paying attention to all that stuff? I mean, I, can, I, I bring that to the table. Well, there's like time. big shows out right now. I know. There's they're Rings all, of Power. There's the... the oh, they're throwing the big guns out. Yeah, Yeah, but have uh, you guys heard... Are they Game flopping? Because they spent huge Rings of Power is like... Stranger Things was, I'm sure, did a lot for Netflix. Oh, wait a minute. When's the new Stranger Things coming out? That I'm excited for. That just came know. out. The yeah. new one? I mean, it was not even like. No, uh, no, 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 no. The next season. They have another season coming. Oh out. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. but I'm saying the the the, the latest one just came out Sorry. like less than six months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they That's got a while. I'm, referring to. I'm sure they got a while before that will yeah. come out. Yeah, I watched. You know what I watched? Speaking of streaming on Netflix, they just released uh, Morbius. Oh, Boy, you was actually that watched that? Terrible. <laughs> That that's was so, been the the internet's like bro, sometimes i feel like forever. you go because there's so much right there's a, a plethora of streaming options and i yeah. feel like you go this is probably gonna be shitty just, you but know, i want to i want to see morbid time yeah what, <laughs> why there's so much i can't even keep up with all the good stuff that's out there on right now and you still choose to watch shitty stuff no no you know what it is <laughs> you know what it is i love i, I kind of i love superhero stuff I love superhero stuff. Yeah, so I'll, I'll watch shitty superhero stuff and then at the end well, of it be upset with myself. Well, let's be honest. Like, if you know it's like a shitty movie and you're still going in, like, you're going in with that mentality, yes. it's totally different. Yes. Yeah. So it's like you can enjoy it for being so bad. So, are you, right now, what's streaming? Are you, any of you guys even watching uh, City on the Hill? No. I am. Of course. Of course you are. It's great. Oh, that's great the, content. The sophisticated no, I got a yeah. show for you guys. <laughs> I got a show for you and you'll love it. Severance. Have you seen it yet on Apple? The one It's the best show I've seen in a long time. Wow. So I, I It's you know, so good. I got four episodes in and I could, it was so slow. Okay, so It's so slow. Bro, for you got to understand Justin, Doug and Adam are like they're like if it's not great poupon, I don't want I, <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly. It's every super refined. Sorry. Dude, the concept is so That's the one I was telling you about where It sounds awesome. You go yeah, he goes to it, work and he just like he completely has a different life. Yeah. I so the concept sucked me in enough I, where I watched four episodes cuz I wanted it to be great, but it, yeah. It yeah. just it was too slow, bro. Really? Mm. Okay, so Where, it are you picks how up deep a lot. Yeah. Oh, does it? It does, yeah. So maybe Stay I'll try with it, dude. Because yeah, if someone tells me something, hey, just because there's some things that take, and maybe that's my because perspective too. Because we kind of burned through the first four, and it was kind of you know I was like mildly interested, and then I got real interested. So it must have been a hook. In yeah, there. the the concept is. Like I, the idea of it sounds like, crazy. Yeah, it's very interesting to me. And I, and Katrina's like, "What are you watching?" The innies versus the Audis, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, they're the. You know what it reminds me of? Um, uh, was it the Manhattan Project when they built the atomic bomb? So they would have loved uh -huh. to have something like that. You know what they, they did? Compartmentalize when they, everybody. Yeah, yeah you know so what they did when know. they built the atomic bomb? Nobody communicated with each other because mm -hmm. they wanted nobody to know what was going on. So these guys worked on this problem and didn't know anything else. These people over here worked on this problem and didn't know anything else. And they tried to keep it as secret as possible. Oh, wow. The Russians still got it. Yep. But, yeah, no. So, I mean, I, that got me for a second, but it was, like I said, it was too slow. Uh, but we, City on the Hill is like, it. you want to talk about great script writing, great acting, like good storyline. So, what's the line. premise? So, it's that? like, it's a 80s, 70s? Yeah, 80s, 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah, it's early, early 80s, and Kevin Bacon plays an incredible part. He's kind of like this corrupt douchebag kind of cop, but his role is incredible. So it goes back in time. So it's telling a story of a character that probably really existed mm. in that time. Cops in the that, 80s and give a fuck. That's why it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's cool. Yeah. Just he, is, he is literally that smoke he's literally that character and, and it's a it's a it's his journey. Does he have a mustache? He does. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great one. Actually. I want to watch it now. No, he does. and he, he plays he plays a great character. They have good mm -hmm. good actors and actresses in it, and it's uh, it's a good plot. So that's a that's. A, but I'm I'm not even current on that. So I'm behind on that one mm -hmm. and some other ones that are really good. But oh. there, I was asking about the streaming because of what Disney Plus is doing now. What are they doing? So 
Disney Plus just came out. The uh, CEO is this the augmented reality yes. stuff. Yes. Oh, that's, so I, I read. So about they this. are moving in the direction of they do not want to be labeled as like a traditional like streaming service. They really are trying to move into this interactive space. And I yeah, off air, I asked you guys each individually about the whole thing with your kids. If your kids are starting to do, and and that was the and it must have been Disney Plus. I saw it first where you can um, join a, a group to watch together. To, yeah, that watch the show together. So if you have this- Back in the day, we used to do that. We just sit together and watch them on TV. <laughs> now it's yeah. like, I don't want to go to your house. I mean, you're right. And we we joke and we laugh about it, but how true is it? That's how our kids play now, right? My like, dad, my son, my son, I don't remember what the what's the app called or how they do that. I, I think it's through Disney streaming. Okay, now. So my son's done it with other things. There's uh, other apps and stuff. So he does that with his friends. Yeah, I have not done it. I asked you guys because I was curious if your kids have, because obviously that, that probably appeals to that generation mm -hmm. more that they meet in Roblox that do yeah. that, mm -hmm. they do video gaming stuff like that. So so yeah, and so they are trying to make it a more interactive experience to the point where and they're, the goal and the mission of the company is to give ninety percent of the people that would never make it to the Disney parks, the experience through their streaming services. Oh, wow. So doing this augmented reality and virtual reality like experience of the things that they would do the park, and then also being able to track your behaviors at the park and Disney store and Disney stuff that you do and being able to curtail your content and the stuff that you will like to that. So now Justin could be a princess at home. When he, yes. He goes in the, I yeah, was just the saying, so now I could have somebody harass me to put my mask over my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm in virtual hell. Listen, too. they don't understand. Yeah. Justin's got a huge nose. It doesn't fit. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, it slips it. down. <laughs> hey, I, I want to give a quick shout out to one of our, our sponsors. I've been getting messages about um, Organifi's product, Glow. Has any of you guys used Glow or your wives use Glow? I have not. Okay, so Simply glow, because of the name. The, because of the name. You don't want to glow. It's the cartilage. It, this is the for skin. protein, right? Yeah, no, no, it's for skin. Oh, okay. It's got hyaluronic acid and some of the compounds that help with skin, uh, like the way your skin looks and feels. So I got some DMs from some from people who said, I love this product. It actually improved the look and, and complexion of my skin. You know who else uses it? Our front staff over there. I've seen Jerry use it and uh, Choki used to use it. Oh, I didn't time. know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because they used to send it to us, and then it would be gone. I'm like, who's taking Glow? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I don't think any of us are using Glow. <laughs> and they, they like it, too. It helps yeah. with their, it helps with skin health. It's a bit of a stretch for me. I yes. feel like Doug might use it, too. Well, Doug, I haven't, like, but I should, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, you're a big skin don't, guy. We don't need your skin to look any better, Doug. Oh, okay. Come on, now. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah, you're, you're already winning, Doug. What you're going to look like a baby soon. What is it that that's in it that is so- I'll pull it up. Uh, that's so beneficial. Yeah, because I'll, I'll pull it up because I have it. Uh, oh, shit. I had it. <laughs> I had it saved over here. I have to pull it up, but I, I I did look at the ingredients, everybody. So don't think I didn't do that. But I again, really really good reviews from people who've been using it. I've, I've so I've had people in the past that have said something about it, but I have it's been a while since uh, I have, and I actually haven't heard um, Organifi really talk about it or promote it very much. Hyaluronic mm -hmm. acid is one of the main ingredients. There's some collagen in there, so it supports natural collagen production and elasticity. Um, uh, so it's, it helps brighten the skin. It's got tremella mushroom in there. So that helps with skin elasticity. It's got acerella in there, antioxidant for healthy blood vessels, amla, which is, uh, supposed to be known for its health promoting compounds, healthy skin, hair, and DNA repair, bamboo silica. This is an essential mineral necessary for collagen synthesis, aloe vera. We know what that does. Rose hips, which has got a really good bioavailable form of vitamin C, pomegranate, baobab fruit, coconut water for the electrolytes, lemon, raspberries, sea salt. And do you and drink vinegar. it or rub it on your face? You drink it. Mm. Yeah, you can rub it on your face rub if you want. Rub it on your body. But you, yeah. just, you just drink it. Mm. Yeah, I want to glow. Hey, real quick. You hear us in this episode talking about a high-protein oatmeal that's got digestive enzymes, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, 30 grams of high-quality plant-based protein. Well, this is the company. It's called Creatures of Habit. Go check them out. In fact, we like them so much, we're considering investing in the company. Go to creaturesofhabit.com forward slash mind pump. Creatures spelled with a K, so it's K-R-E-A-T-U-R-E-S, and then ofhabit.com forward slash mind pump. By the way, you can use the code MP25 for 25% off. That's the biggest discount you'll get on this particular product anywhere. Again, it's creaturesofhabit.com forward slash mind pump, and the code is MP25 for 25% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Ahmed from Australia. Ahmed, what's happening? How can we help you? Good, thanks. How are we all doing today? Very good. Very Great. Good. That's it, go. Um, I'd just firstly like to say I love all your content you put out there. It's greatly appreciated. But like 
my family onto all your like episodes and uh, podcasts. So yeah, um, my first question, well, my question for you today is: I com- recently completed a Olympic weightlifting training block with Sunny Webster, a friend of yours, um, and I was just wondering how I can keep like keep up these skills and everything and which like sorry so i'm running max anabolic and i was just wondering how i can add in some of these skit like the olympic the clean and jerk and the snatch into uh, my training without overtraining because i've heard you guys say before that uh to strictly run these programs as is so that way you don't uh overtrain Okay, so let me get that. So, so let me just clarify. So, you want to continue doing a MAPS program. Yeah. You also would like to incorporate some of these Olympic lifts so that you don't lose the skill of them, correct? Yes, correct. Easy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Replace a couple of the, the squats in, in anabolic. And then I would even do like on some trigger days, like uh, working on your technique with like super lightweight or no weight. Right. Just, so, control, yeah. just control for the volume. So, you know, I would, I would replace. Okay. I would not, I, it's like I wouldn't cut out like barbell curls for a clean because that's not really a yeah. fair, a fair volume trade, right? But like a yeah. deadlift, um, a squat, mm-hmm. those exercises could probably, you know, one like maybe set to set, right? So, like if I'm going to do a set of uh, of cleans, then I'll probably do one less set of squats, for example. Yeah. So you could just, okay, awesome. yeah, yeah, you could just do the, the volume trade. And, um, and then take it from there. And then as far as the intensity is concerned, I mean, you've, you've already done a competition, so you know, the proper intensity for Olympic lifting while yep. you're, you know, while you're training with a particular type of frequency, that's really, yes, that's, exactly. that's really all you want to do. And then kind of feel it out because, you know, I'm saying it's a one-to-one trade, it, you know, Olympic lifting is very explosive. So yep. depending on how you feel, it may be more like two sets for every set of, of cleans, for example, or vice yeah. versa. So you're gonna kind of feel it out, but essentially you wanna you wanna equate for volume. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. And would this be the same with all your other programs? Like I've got maps anabolic, maps performance, and maps aesthetic. So yeah. would it be yeah. the same concept? You can do that with performance easy. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. Now you're gonna to have to play with them a little bit because some programs are you know, much more bodybuilding focused, uh, isolation, yeah. fo- you know, that kind of like, like, like split might be a little bit more challenging because each yeah. workout is in full body. So it's like, where do I put the, yeah. where do I put the cleans and the snatches on back well, days? There's high pull in, in performance, which is a natural yeah. fit there to replace. So there's, there's opportunities yeah. for that. And like in strong as well, you know, there'd be probably a lot more opportunities to just do a, a straight trade out. Uh, yeah. but in terms of like what they're talking about with volume, that's kind of how you'd have to look at it and then, and sprinkle in just real light, um, you know, practicing of, of those movements during the, the frequency builder days. Yeah. That's what I, I think if it was on a trigger or focus day, I think I would still be, cause obviously Olympic lifts are, are far more technical than any of your traditional lifts. So I'd be doing those just like super lightweight, you know, just work technique days. So instead of it being quote unquote trigger days or focus days, those would be my technique days. And that's when I, you know, barely load the bar and I just, I'm working on the speed of the bar and the technique of the movement, you know? I mean, this is pretty yeah. much how, yeah, I, I suggest a lot of athletes use our programs because you don't really want to stray too far away from your skills training. That's something you have to incorporate, especially if you're, you know, building any substantial amount of muscle, you got to simultaneously really consider keeping that skill set. So if your body changes um, and you have, you know, more mass to account for, it doesn't like, you know, mess with the mechanics and, and the coordination and, and athleticism. Yeah. Okay. All right. So ho- hopefully awesome. that helped you. Yeah. You, is that, does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. Thank you for your help, guys. You got awesome. it. Right Th- on. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. See you. You got it. Yeah. I think the, the important thing to communicate here is when you're accounting for volume and you're trying to swap out that you try to find exercises with, a, with relatively equivalent demand mm-hmm. on the CNS and the muscles of the body. Absolutely. So it's like, I wouldn't be like, yeah, let me take out some side lateral so I could do some, you know, <laughs> some snatches. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, it would be a squats, deadlifts, high pulls, you know, yeah. exercise. The, the demanding ones, the yeah, compound and then, lifts. And then also, if you're if you're adding in these big gross motor movements, like a snatch and a clean, it's like a full body exercise. Mm-hmm. 
it's going to be harder to program that program that into a a split type routine where oh today I'm only doing chest shoulders and triceps. Mm-hmm. Well, where do I put you know the, the snatch that's got some shoulders, got some legs in it, it's got some back. Like what day do I put that on? But if you pick one of our full body routines, which most of them, most of our programs are kind of full body based with like two or three full body workouts with other things sprinkled in, then it gets a little easier. Then you can say instead of squatting for four sets, I'll squat for two sets and they do one or two sets of like a clean, for example. Or all mm-hmm. four. I mean, I would, right. I would probably trade all four out. Like I just right. say, hey, I'm not going to squat right now. I'm going to do, you know, the snatch or clean. You know, that's what I'm going to do there instead. Exactly. Yep. Our next call- caller is Cody from Minnesota. Cody, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi. Um, for context, I guess, I just started a brand new job <clears throat> at a steel mill. And most of the stuff is moving stuff by hands anywhere, pretty much minimum. It's typically about 80 to 100 pounds, anywhere up to 250, either by myself or with another person. And with that, there's... Even even by myself, there's a lot of tugging, pulling, all that stuff, um, especially with another person. <clears throat> and I was just trying to figure out how to incorporate any clubs, steel clubs, and uh, steel maces into my workout routines and my off-day routines. <clears throat> um, just to kind of help prevent injuries from this job because there's a lot of strain in my wrists and shoulders so far mostly. And I'm just confused of how to add that or what movements I should be doing. Although I'm fairly, fairly new to it, but um, right now I'm just kind of doing them at the end of like a modified anabolic for what needs I have just because Mm. this job's very heavy on the back and biceps. So I'm kind of toning that down, increasing the, chest volume and stuff and then steel mace or clubs at the end of the workout yeah. justin do you and then justin do you yeah. um do you use the steel mace like towards the end or by themselves normally like i i always use it as a primer that's typically yeah. how i use it um yeah i mean there's there's kind of multiple ways that you could approach it but yeah i tend to do it beforehand um and that's just because again because it's kind of a skill so i'm not trying to do it after I'm under a state of fatigue. Um, and, uh, you know, I think later on there's probably value to that, but for me, I like to, um, you know, address that and like get my rotators and everything, like some work beforehand and just get the mechanics of it down get good posture with it. So I'll do it typically before I'll start, um, any kind of upper body workout specifically. I'm definitely doing that. Yeah. Cody, uh, in essence, you're not, you don't treat, uh, Indian clubs or mace like you do straight, strength training in the sense that you're doing it like to fatigue. Now it's, it can definitely be a workout. Don't get me wrong. There are ways to do that, but it's, it's very skill-based. It's very fluid. So ideally, um, if you're trying to do it to prevent injury and you're trying to figure out how to, how to add it to your day or your workouts, I would say do it before work for 10, 15 minutes. You could do it at lunch, 10 minutes before you get back to work. Um, I wouldn't do it at the end of a workout at MAPS Anabolic. If anything, I would do it at the beginning of a workout for about 10 to 15 minutes and then get into the workout. It's really good at priming the body, getting things to to work together, getting things to be very fluid. Yeah, wake your CNS I think it's best for that. I mean, especially if you're going lightweight. I mean- and, and that's why I'm a little reserved with it because I know, like, I've actually like challenged myself to just focus on that more as a skill and see how far I could go in terms of the load. Uh, and there is a way to progressively overload it and and to actually work out with a heavy mace bell. Um, so if that's your desired goal, then it would look different than what I'm suggesting. Uh, and that would be like a lot more focus in that direction. You'd have to like exclusively kind of like uh, that's your workout. Yeah, that's your workout. You're you're working. That's on such a improving. good point, Jesse, because it really it really makes a difference on it, what am I using the, the mace and the Indian clubs for? Am I using it to set my body up, protect in my joints, like kick, help my, my, take my body through full range of motion and keep healthy shoulders? Is that, and wrist and elbow, is that my main goal? Or am I like trying to get badass at swinging the heviest mace and heaviest yeah, Indian clubs? Yeah, which is clubs? cool too. It's just different. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. You know, I, and I think there's a lot of confusion sometimes around these tools because there's uh, the people that sell these, they sell them as a, you know, this is all you need to work out type of tool. And so yeah. they they put they put together like 
programs around it. And you see a lot of guys that are hardcore mace guys and, and you see them like doing full routines and they look kind of cool and shit when they do it. Personally, that's not my gem. Like I see tremendous value in those tools and I see how it, it's it's been one of the best ways for me to prime my shoulders before I start almost any upper body workout. And I absolutely yeah. love doing it. Justin got me turned on it for that. But And I've kind of messed a little bit with overloading it just to see how kind of strong I get it. But that's not the main focus for me. But I see the value there. So it, you really have to ask yourself, like, what what are you trying to get out of it? Do you want to be like a badass Mason Indian Club guy? I'm going to program it different. If you're like, hey, what's the best way for me to use this tool to help my performance in my other lifts and just my overall fitness goals, then I'm probably going to put it at the front of my workouts. And then maybe, and I don't even know if I'm going to do it like Sal's doing it, saying like 10 minutes multiple times a day. I'm I'm going to do it before every workout. That's going to be how or, I start my workout. Or before work. He's got a d demanding job. Or yeah, or that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I would do 10 minutes in the morning before before work. Yeah, if, if you're, look, when it comes to exercise tools, when you look at an exercise tool, you want to say, what is this best for? Mm -hmm. And then let me use that tool for what it's best for. For example, uh, when it comes to like building just raw strength and muscle, it's hard to beat dumbbells and barbells. Okay, it's it's almost impossible to beat them. If you now can you build muscle, raw muscle and strength with uh, heavy mace? Yeah, you can, but it's not going to compare with the barbell dumbbell. Now, what does a mace do? Way better than barbell or dumbbell. Rotational stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. rotational stuff, core stability throughout the movement. I mean, unless you're going to swing a heavy sword on the battlefield and you want to be able to handle something really heavy, you could chop your enemy's heads off or whatever. In which case I would say really progressively overload it. But in your case, I would do 10 minutes before work, 10 minutes at lunch before mm -hmm. you get back to, to doing your job and at the beginning of your workouts to really keep your joints fluid yeah. and mobile and strong and work all the stable. And even then, I mean, your Indian clubs are even better for wrists, elbow, yeah. you know, rotation versus, um, you know, the, the mace belt itself being, you know, a lot better for that external rotation of the shoulder. So, you know, they both kind of have their, uh, their place in terms of like priority. Um, but I definitely, if, if you're new to them, like just adding that bit of rotation is going to do so much for the support, uh, that's, that's void, uh, in our everyday activities. Yeah. And Cody, I would, I would start with the most basic movements, uh, with each tool and just do those until you get really, really good at them. And then you can get you know, a little bit more fancy, but the basic, the most basic movements. Yeah. You don't need to do all the dance moves you see on Instagram. Yeah. And just practice and practice and practice them. I still use the the foundational one that Justin taught me. Yeah. I haven't Same even, here. I haven't even really progressed it. It's Same. like, it doesn't, it, it, the, it, when I use the Indian clubs more than I use a mace, it primes my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder so well yep. mm -hmm. that I haven't found any reason to really progress that. So I do, that's how I prime like almost every time before I work out. Is that, does that help Cody? Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, the, other part of that, um, too, is I'm uh, using them on – so instead of the trigger sessions, I'm doing mobility with, like, 10 minutes of that also. Okay. Okay. And then, like, 20, 30 minutes of mobility. Um, just I, – I've had them for a while now, but because of starting this job, I've been really wanting just to protect my shoulders and my wrists. And mm -hmm. yeah, <clears throat> I know they're really good for that. And I – should I be doing them on my mobility? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, I like that. No, it's a skill. I like you, that. You practice them every day. Do you have maps? Okay. Do you have Mass Prime Pro? Is that where you're getting mo mobility movements from? Yep, Prime and Prime Pro. I'm actually taking advantage of that in the morning. They give us 15 minutes to stretch. Everyone does their own stretches, and then I'm out. Um, they're doing mobility for 15 minutes, or not, or Prime Pro. Oh, beautiful. And Prime. Oh yeah. No, yeah. you're you're set. You're set. Yeah. I would, like use them as practice. Do them often and frequently. And I'd bring them to work and do them before you get started. Yeah, like yeah that's smart, doing. man. Okay. All right. And then, uh, oh, my other question too with um, anabolic or performance or any program I'm doing, just with I, if this lifting is consistent throughout the day. I'm not sore, but I'm like, feel like I'm getting a really good workout, at least in my back and my biceps. Should I, when I'm doing something like anabolic, should I still be doing the two, three days a week or should I cut it down to one? Cause there's certain days, especially recently that it's, I, yesterday I had to do everything by myself, carrying all that. So I just took the day off of no working out after work. Cause I got the workout at work. Well, 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 Cody, here's what's, here's what's interesting about what you're, so you just started this job, right? 
Uh, yeah, three weeks ago. Okay. Yes, I would go down to one workout, but here's what you're going to find. If you end up doing this for a long time, yeah, you get adapted. your work capacity is going to be, I mean, I, 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 my, most of my family's blue, blue collar and their work capacities after doing, you know, 10 years, 15 years of mixing cement, putting up wood and whatever, the work capacity these guys have is just ridiculous. So they, they would add a normal MAPS anabolic workout to their work and be fine. But if I started their jobs, I'd have to go down to one day a week until my work capacity built up. So right now I would go one workout and then wait until okay. everything feels like it's super easy and then add another day and go to the two days and so on. Yeah, I think the way you're approaching it already is, is perfect. You're yeah. listening to your body. You know, mm -hmm. you, you knew you 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 know overtaxed it a little bit. It's a new job and you're probably gonna be sore from it. So you took the day off. I think that's and that's I think that's how you have to handle this until you get to the point where Sal's saying, but you will, your body will adapt to your work and then it'll it won't feel like it's a workout anymore. Yep. You know? Okay. And then kind of, kind of adapt it to, like I said, I'm mostly using biceps and back. So I cut those down by a set and increase the triceps and chest yeah. stuff to yeah. the higher range. Yeah. Do that. But also, also don't, don't forget this. Like it's just a lot of work. Your CNS is just, I mean, you're lifting things. So yeah, the muscles mostly involved are biceps back, probably some of your, your glutes and hamstrings, but it's also just fatiguing on the body. So don't, 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 it's still going to affect your entire body. Although more more so, your the the direct muscles being involved. But I think you're, you have you're, you're, you have the right approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like what you're doing, okay. bro. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks, Thank Cody. You. Thank you. You know, this yeah. is one of the things I really love. Uh, it, it takes me back to again the when you first sent over Maps Anabolic, and I just I just loved everything about it because, you know, th this is. Uh, this is real life. This happens to people all mm -hmm. the time. They switch jobs. And it's such a beautiful program that you can go, hey, just scale the one day a week yeah, for right now. Mold it to your needs. Yeah, and you're hitting every muscle group that you need to. Your body's going to see good results. You wait for your, your body to adapt to the workload. Then you start to add the second day. Then you add a third. It's just, it's such a, a, a incredible program for most people, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I love I love that. Yeah, the, th the thing that's funny is that, or what's interesting is as he's talking about this job that he has and how it's going to affect his workouts, and it will affect your workouts at first, mm -hmm. but you work in a steel mill for a year, two years, three years, four years, the capacity of your body to just develop yeah. work capacity yeah. is profound it's unreal yeah. i learned this firsthand going to work with my dad and my, my 70 year old grandfather visiting coming to mix cement with us and i'm a 16 year old boy i've been working out for two years i got all kinds of testosterone energy and my grandfather ran me into the dirt like i remember at the end of the yeah. day i looked at my dad and i said how did how did no no just he just ran circles around me because he's been doing this since he was a kid yeah. Yeah, you feel that in their handshake yes yeah. so i mean so he'll eventually if he stays at this job he'll be able to go up to a regular workout because his day to day stuff is just gonna become his day to day stuff. This also too, I mean, it reminds me. I used to kind of voice and be more vocal about like the benefits of Indian clubs and like adding rotation because it's just it seriously is not something people consider in their it's everyday in no activities. workouts. You know, nothing. Yeah. Like, it's not in the gym. Nobody's doing it, and it's hard to replicate that. Like yeah. it's hard to like create that with weights or you know cables. Even it's it's funky, right? And yeah. so it, it's just one of those things that never took off. But I always get like reminded like oh there are people out there that are interested in doing that and watch the benefit he gets and receives from this well you know i think that and that's why i brought up what i think is um why he has that question and why it can be some so, so challenging is because like everything else we do in the fitness space you know we, we take a little bit of something that's good and then we turn it into like this thing and, it, and there, it's turned into a camp mm -hmm. yeah. right so it's like you when you if you look online and you like you look up the hashtag may it may spell or Indian clubs and you see these guys and they're doing like full routines. Yeah. They're just yeah. they're specialists and they're barefoot yeah. and they're doing like you know all, and that's like it's like their whole workout and now they've they've yeah. adopted yeah. this it's way. Cool and they get more clicks when they do cool and stuff. And that's fine yeah. and that's fine. It's but the problem is when they say this is better than everything. Don't use anything else. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and not all of them are technically saying that. But you if you don't know any better, you see that and you assume like, oh, okay, this is this is the best guy with like who am I to tell you? how to use a mace when you can find a guy online who like can do everything with yeah, a mace. Exactly. Like right. you think he's the expert in it. Like he's the one who should tell me how to use a mace where I'm like, well, it depends on what you're trying to do. You want to get like him? Do you want to be just this badass mace swinger? Or are you trying to reap the benefits that you get from using that tool? And then how do I program that efficiently into my normal routine that I like to right. do? And so I think that's why there's confusion around that. And I mean, I honestly, Justin, you turned me on to Indian clubs a long time ago now, and I absolutely love 
priming with that. I think, mm -hmm. and it's when you when you learn the movement, and I use the same basic. I don't know if there's a name for the movement. Yeah, it's like a heart swing is okay. the typical one. Yeah, so you've you, and I can't even do it both. I know I see you do both. I mm -hmm. still I'm not I'm not sophisticated enough to do both. I can do I do one heart swing on one side, and then I go to the other side, and nothing primes my wrists, my elbows, and shoulders better than that, and it's fun. And it's great to get in my workout, and that's all I do with it. Yep. I don't, I don't try and mess with the, anything else or add to the routine. It, it does a great job of that. Our next caller is Jake from Florida. Jake, what's happening? How can we help you? How's it going, tiny beard, uh, the journey man, and what's happening? Adam. <laughs> you just Adam. No name, Adam. <laughs> give, give him Moody or something. Uh, oh, thank easy. you, Justin. That's something. What's happening? Yeah. So I just. Uh, my question was, uh, I just got off the Appalachian Trail. So since March, uh, I basically spent five and a half months hiking in the woods. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to like rehab my body without putting on a massive amount of weight. Um, basically, like when you're out there, you're carrying between 25 and 35 pounds. Water and food obviously fluctuates. And just like, as you guys say, being like a complete asshole because you're limited to what is, you know, non-perishable. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering what, what I should do as far as like training and stuff to try to like prevent like massive weight gain. And then also if I'm going to want to do another hike like this, something insane, like what kind of phasing and programming would I want to do in like leading up to that? Ooh. Good question. Mm. So for people who don't, okay, so let's talk about this hike for a second because it's insane. The like the, the full on trail is insane, right? How many miles is it? Uh, this year they reroute a bunch like every year. So this year it was 2194.3. So 2000 so, mile hike. How much weight did you lose on the, on the, on the hike or did you lose any? So weirdly enough, I, I lost a bunch. This is pretty typical. A lot of people lose a lot in the beginning. Um, and then sort of you, eat more um and the terrain levels out so overall i lost about five to ten pounds oh, um, no. i had about 10 days off before i like actually weighed myself so only about 10 pounds but halfway through i was down like 17 okay not too bad and, <laughs> yeah, so and how long ago did you complete the trail uh i've been off i finished on august 28th so just a little bit over two weeks Okay. So you're probably going to need at least another, um, maybe two to three weeks of, of, of rest and relaxation. And in that period of time, I would do light movement, stretching, mobility. If you have access to things like sauna and, you know, ice dip, cold showers, that kind of stuff, good sleep. Cause that's pretty taxing on the body, especially if that's, that was new for you. Like if you didn't hike your whole life like that and you, you did it. Right. Um, so I would give yourself another two or three weeks of just getting your body to start to feel back to normal. And then when you get okay. back into your training, I would train just very traditional. I would go MAPS Anabolic would yeah. be a good workout. MAPS Performance would be a good workout. Symmetry would be decent. MAPS Symmetry would be good. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then as far as food intake, I would focus on hitting my protein targets and focus on whole natural foods. And that should that should regulate regulate itself mostly. You should find that if you hit your protein targets and aim for whole natural foods, avoid heavily processed foods, you'll naturally kind of self-regulate in terms of calories and, and everything else. As far as programming to get you ready to do it again, I really like Map Strong with the because of the, the work, work session. capacity, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I I would go strong OCR and then go to the and then do the hike. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, those two those two programs I think have su such a high level of work capacity in there. I think that's going to that will carry over into your hike. Yeah. Uh, I, right. I also he, I also try to go into the hike heavy. So yeah, that's what I did this mm -hmm. year. I, I had attempted last year and lost like way too much weight. So I, I came in chunky. Y yeah. Yeah. I, I think ideally you'd want to start in the high teens, uh, body fat, at least, you know, 17, 18%. Okay. Yeah. Good and uh, husky. Okay. Yeah. Maybe even 20% cause you're going to want that fuel, um, right. as you're, you know, as you're, as you're doing this, just gr cause you're hiking like 10 miles, 15 miles a day or more. Right. 20, 25. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So even more than that. Well, I'm so I'm so curious about this. Before we actually got on the phone with you, Sal saw this and uh, made a comment about how he would totally want to do this one day, and I looked at him crazy. Um, what what motivates you to do something like this? Who did you do it with? Like, I mean, tell me a little bit about this. Any I don't know epiphanies any, uh, I, you had out there? So, or what? Yeah. 
So that's a that's a question I get a lot. Like, why would you want to do that? Um, I have cerebral palsy, oh. mm. and I got really good therapy as a kid. So this is just like one of those things where I'm like, it'd be kind of badass if I did this. Oh, that's cool. I'm awesome. not supposed to be good at walking, and I like hiking, so I was like, why not do it? And I was also kind of like, you know, I'm 25. I'm sort of like finding myself still. I wanted a, like a nice crucible. I wanted to push my body and, and you know, see what I could do. But I, you know, also just kind of thought I'd like who I was at the end of it. Um, went out there solo, but like this year, I think there was like 6,500 people started that were attempting a full through. So I was never really alone unless I wanted to be. Cool. Wow. That's oh, yeah. really cool. That's yeah. why Adam doesn't want to do it. Yeah. It's too hard. Yeah, he doesn't want to be with himself. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. It's a long yeah. time to be with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, okay. So do you have map strong or maps OCR? Cause I think those are good programs for you leading into the next one. Yeah, I, I'm like super addicted to your podcast, but I don't have any of your programs. I've been Holy working cow. out. Jim oh, wow. Does all, nice. of our pro- Jake, does all of our programming for us. Jake, so we're going to hook you up. Watch out for the shade. I'm going to hook you up. You ready for this? You're about to get more programs than anybody I've ever had been on the show. You ready for this? <laughs> I'm going to give you, we're going to send you Maps Anabolic, Map Strong, and Maps OCR. So we'll give you all three <laughs> programs. Yeah. The um, trifecta. Yeah. So Anabolic will be good coming out of what you're coming out of. Only, if you, only if you tell everybody on the mountain when you're hiking about Mind Pump. Yeah. Yeah, like well, I, I, I did an article about my pre hike training too. So I'll definitely like, I'm going to do a little bit of a like a post hike rehab um, documentation. So I'll definitely give some shout outs there for sure. Good deal. I don't know if it's a stupid question. Is there reception up there? Can you listen to the podcast while you're hiking? Can you actually put something in your ear at least? So, like in towns, you can. So, um, and then a lot of places there are is reception. It's pretty spotty, but usually what I would do is like I'd come into town and I'd look through the episodes and like, pretty much download everything I missed. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, which was actually awesome. Uh, sometimes like my brain would check out cause I'm hiking and then I'd have to like stop, especially if there's something interesting. I'm like, okay, I have to come back to this later. But yeah, I, I listened to a lot of you guys awesome. out there. Awesome. Kept me, well, kept me somewhat sane. Well, well, Hey, thank you. And that sounds like an awesome adventure. So good deal, man. Is there good anything you, I can do to like maintain sort of like any of the endurance and like cardio like, cause I, I feel like I probably have a decent like ability to do a lot of work and like flush lactic acid and all that coming off of trail. Is there anything I can do other than like tons of low intensity steady state to like maintain any of that? I mean, hiking, you can do more hiking, but if you're trying to do something with a, with time constraints, uh, right. hit cardio can maintain it a decent amount. So okay. yeah, you could do like 15 minutes on a, a bike or, you know, right. something where you could push yourself really hard for 10 seconds and then, yeah, yeah. you know, 30 seconds to 60 seconds of, of kind of low steady state and then repeat. Cool. That'll maintain some of it, but you're going to lose some of it because the kind of stamina right. and endurance you built, you built hiking right. 20 miles a day. So you're also going right. to get a, a lot back though. Yeah. Once you get to maps, OCR quickly too. maps, OCR and strong too, because yeah. there's a lot, there's, there's work sessions in there. And then there, we actually right. program like the runs in OCR. So there's, right. you're going to, you're going to get some of that back when you get into those programs for sure. Kick mm-hmm. ass. Yep. All right. Good deal. Jay. Dal, you should definitely do the hike. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll see if find I can six months, Adam. find six months and do it, dude. It'll change your life. He's That's a, I figured. He's a months, fucking liar. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks guys. You got yeah. it. First of all, I said, I'd like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I will. <laughs> fucking six months. You have to put all the kids on your back, dude. Yeah, all dude. four. Yeah. You know what? It sounds, um, uh, something about it sounds awesome. Like you just yeah. escape for six months. And just, you know, and it's not so scary and crazy that I feel like I could, you know, I could attempt it. It's like a it. self-discovery kind of a journey. Right? I feel yeah, like, like Justin's most likely to do it. Yeah, You're most likely to talk about it. No, no, first of all. I would have done it a long time ago. I don't think. First of all, days. I would take Justin. Yeah. He would be my, the guy with me. For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. If, you know, bear comes I'd out. I'd feed you little bars. Doug, dude. would you do it? <laughs> Uh, if I was retired and had nothing else to do, maybe well, that, that's when I would do it. Yeah. We're never, none of us are retired. You shut the <laughs> fuck retired. Up. <laughs> yeah. That's a dirty word in here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll podcast when we get into town. Yeah. Hey, we're back. It ain't happening. Hey. Yeah. It ain't happening. We could put yeah. Doug inside a backpack. Find, find me at the five star yeah. hotel at one of the I towns. Blisters. Yeah. <laughs> it was whiny. Who, who's the guy walking on the trail with the driving gloves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Adam will be like, All I'm day. A, in, in honor of you guys hiking the trail, I'm going to do miles on the trail treadmill every day that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> yeah. okay people are gonna throw little little pebbles at me <laughs> so, i'll splash you with water to give you a towel really cool though reason though i think that was really cool. very that cool was. reason and i think doing really hard shit is a great way to find 
to get through your demons and find shit. I really do. Yeah. And I mean, I can't, that's a, that's five months yeah. of hiking 20 miles a day in the woods. Yeah, it's gnarly. Yeah. That's Legit. gnarly, man. Our next caller is Chris from Wisconsin. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. Uh, this is really crazy. I got the email like five minutes ago to join this. Um, I had a question about creatine intake and my water intake because of the creatine. Um, so a little background before I start, um, I've been training strength training specifically for about nine years and I was a collegiate athlete, uh, for shot with discus hammer and weight. Um, so I've done power, mostly powerlifting and Olympic style weightlifting, but I've done hypertrophy from high school and that's what I've been doing since I quit the, or I graduated. Um, once I left track and field and graduated, I decided I needed to lose because I don't need to throw this heavy stuff anymore. Um, and I've been taking five grams of creatine daily, but recently I've noticed that my body craves a lot more water. So I'm sitting at about six liters of water a day, which is according, I read studies by the Mayo Clinic and Science Direct who recommend around 3.7 liters. I know in episode 1830, you guys talked about uh, one gallon being about the limit for most people. Um, but as my intake stands, I'm about 60% higher than most people. So I'm wondering, is there something that essentially is wrong with me, I guess? Well, Chris, oh, no. Chris, you're, you're also about 60% bigger than most people. I was going to say that. That was exactly good. I was going to say, you look about 60% bigger than most people. Yeah, just based off your neck and traps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. say. Tell us how small you are. Yeah. So how, how, tall, um, how, how tall are you? What's your body weight? I'm 6'4", 280 right now. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you're yeah. good, bro. Yeah. You're cool. I, 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 used to, I, I used to drink up to three gallons when I was competing, okay? Okay. Yeah. Not, and I'm not advocating for that for the listeners and that are going to freak out and be like, oh, my God, you're going to drown somebody. Okay, I'm not saying everybody should drink three gallons. My point is you're much bigger than I am, and I handled three gallons. Yeah, and I'm assuming your water, your protein intake's high, and you're, and you're probably sweating your workouts. If if you yes. if you think that you're excreting too much water and not able to to absorb as much water as you could, you can try adding something like like element tea to your water or a little sodium. I I have uh, I started out with regular like sodium pow like uh, electrolyte powder you can get from Amazon. And I just ordered my first element tea. Yeah, so that that'll help your body absorb and utilize more of that water. So that can be pretty beneficial. But I, I wouldn't worry about, you know, you should worry about too much water consumption if your electrolyte balance is getting thrown off. If you're noticing things like heart palpitations, uh, muscles having issues with contractions or twitching, um, you know, issues with inflammation or sleep, like things that that can show that your electrolytes may be off. In which mm -hmm. case, I would yeah, I would look more at that. But I doubt you're drinking. I doubt you're drinking too much water. The only time that you got to be, you know, like, oh my god, I can't seem to quench my thirst. I would get your blood sugar checked, make sure you're not diabetic or anything crazy like that. But yeah, other than that, I think you're 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 totally fine. Okay, because I didn't want to go over to like my body wants another two liters, and that's eight liters. That's like almost double what the or three times amount what the. Uh, daily recommended is so I didn't want to overdo it. Yeah, if you're if you're really worried, um, you can get your kidney function checked. You can get your electrolytes checked. Get your blood sugar checked. Kidney dysfunction or you know diabetes when it first comes on. Some people can like it looks like it's almost like they can't quench their thirst. But mm -hmm. you typically see this in non-athletic people. It's like your you know your 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 unhealthy aunt all of a sudden yeah. is like, oh my god, I'm drinking so much water and I just can't seem to drink enough. I'd be like, ooh, you might want to get that checked out. But a guy like you, your size, your muscle mass, you're probably working out and sweating a lot. I, I, it sounds like you're, you're okay. Okay. Um, I have a second question. If you guys have time, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's hear it. Uh, in episode 1809, you guys talked about tempo training, and I've done tempo training uh, for five, six, seven years all throughout college. Um, and right now I'm at one, uh, one, one, one tempo. So I'm wondering about the benefits of switching tempo every so often. Cause I'm in a cut right now, losing all that weight from throwing. Um, so when you talk about tempo, should there be like short weeks like, or not like short periods of time, like one to two weeks to reintroduce a, like a four, two, two or a pause set or a pause rep. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Exercises. Oh, and, uh, 
absolutely. Look, you you were a um, you threw hammer and you were a shot putter, so you, you're probably really used to explosive, explosive contractions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, re- and now, negative now, now, yeah. Now, unless you're looking to continue competing in that sport, um, I would have fun spending time in bodybuilding tempos. You know, a four second negative or a three second negative. Mm-hmm. Um, have fun with powerlifting tempos where you pause during sticking points in your reps. Have fun with that. And what you'll find is because it's novel, you're going to respond really well to it. You'll see your muscles grow. You'll see more definition. I also think it's a smarter strategy for someone like you when you are in a caloric deficit. So someone like you is really strong and he probably can move a lot of weight and you're used to going one, one, one. There's that temptation to load the bar even heavier than, you know, than maybe you should in a cut. Whereas if you know you have to slow the tempo way yeah. down, mm-hmm. you've got to lighten the load. So it's just a probably a safer the psychological sm- benefit. Too. Yeah. There's a psychological benefit to, you know, when I'm in a cut, I like, that's when I really like to slow down the tempo, mess with isometrics and do that. Cause I'm like, I already know I shouldn't be lifting the heaviest weight possible. Cause I'm not going to be the strongest I am possible. Cause I'm in this cut. And so I tend to, I tend to lean towards slow, even slower tempos when I'm, in, you know, in a deficit like that. Um, not to say that there's not benefits of going the opposite direction. I just, I, I mean, a guy, a guy with your much raw power, uh, my, if you were my client, I'd be like, hey, you know what? Let's take this opportunity totally. while we're in a cut to like mm-hmm. really slow your tempo down so we don't risk you doing, you know, hurting yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess the second part of that question is when I do change the tempo, do I change anything about my calories or macros? No. It's because it is a new novel stimulus, so my muscles will respond differently. Yeah, yep. no. I mean, unless you're trying to cut or gain or whatever, I would leave it the same. What you're probably going to find is you'll build a little muscle and burn a little body fat. So you just may notice a little bit more definition or a little bit more sculpt to your body just yeah. because it's going it's to respond really well. Like when I take someone like you, and it's it's not common, it's very rare – that I would train someone who trained explosively most of their career and then have them slow down. Mm-hmm. But I have a, a little bit of experience with that. I had a couple clients like that, and um, boy, did their body – and this was post-competing, right? So they're done. They're not in their sport anymore. And, man, their their muscles responded so well. It was like yeah. this – they just they started building all this incredible muscle. almost so, gained in a deficit. It's yeah. Like, it's a oh, trip. Yeah. It, was, it was a composition switch is what happened. So, yeah, yeah. No, give it a try. And unless you're really trying to cut or gain – uh, I wouldn't base the macros off the tempo. Okay. Uh, and someone just some, some kind of tangent. Uh, I'm an engineer. Um, and I know that, um, Justin, you were talking about, uh, chipmunks and, uh, vermin in your yard, uh, <laughs> yeah. being a autonomous paintball gun for my dad. Cause he had this, he has the same problem. Okay. Um, so you might want to look into something like that. Cause it's, Definitely fixes the hassle of trying to get rid of them. I guess. Wow. What was, what was, what was the fix? Autonomous paintball gun. Yeah. Oh, paintball you can do gun? it with. You can do it with any any yes. kind of gun. But since I live in Wisconsin, my parents live in Ohio. I mean, I've been I shooting them with shoot. BBs, but yeah. I'll, wait, wait. I'll explain explain how an autonomous paintball it gun. tracks them it tracks. and then it sees yeah. them and. Bup, 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 bup. <laughs> You made that? that Did you make awesome. one of those? I'm I'm in the process of making. My dad's birthday is in uh, July or June next June, and I want to do that. That's, that's sick. Gonna, oh, that's gonna be bro. Good. Hook it up. Bro. I don't even have a rodent problem, but I want one of those. <laughs> uh, yeah. My kids will go crazy. We'll work on that. solicitors coming to your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Random people coming up on bikes. That's pretty. cool. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for calling in, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You got it. Awesome. It's funny, he's like he's you know we don't obviously see his whole body. Uh, and by the way, as he was talking, and bro, I was thinking the exact thing you yeah. said. And he, and he says he's a collegiate athlete. I was in my head. I'm like he was either shot put or football because he's a big his yeah, neck. He's you can just tell big by his neck, muscular neck. Yeah, yeah but I mean, right he's like yeah, I drink sixty percent more water. I'm like bro, you are you're like two people. Yeah, you need That's to drink you everybody's are. water. Yeah, 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 yeah of yeah. course you're gonna drink a little bit more water. It's yeah. weird how people get afraid of. Or how those it's because of stupid social media. And, it's yeah. another one. Of, you know what we brought up the other day about like you know controversial tips. Like that could have been one for me. It would have been like pushing the water because for, you know there's been that swing. It went, which is so I think an, annoying to be as a coach who's been training people for so long. I nine ninety nine percent of the time my clients did not drink enough water. So the uh, the messaging of trying to get them to drink, you yeah. know, push towards a gallon, I think is a good message. But then there's always somebody who wants to try and counter that and, you know, use some extreme examples. It's rare. It's really rare. But it, when it happens where someone drinks too much water, yeah. it's because they're either drinking distilled water, which is dangerous, 
or their electrolytes are off, or there's a kidney issue, mm -hmm. or they're in some kind of competition to see who can drink the most water. I don't know if you've heard of those, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there it's were a couple radio, radio stations station. that did that a while ago, and, and some people died. But most people are not going to get, they're not going to drink so much water that they hurt themselves. You actually have to really force yourself. Yeah, you have to try it. You almost have to yeah. try it unless you have a condition. And it's a speed thing, too. Yeah, with those yes. radio stations, they were just chugging, chugging, you know, and, you know, obviously drowning themselves uh, with water. But yeah, if you're just reasonably just drinking and hydrating yourself mm -hmm. constantly, I mean, what do you got? And if it's mineral water or you add a little sodium to it, I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's even less, even less of a worry. Sure. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. Also, if you want to find us on social media, you can find Justin Tinybeard on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find Adam, the Moody Man, on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me, Sal, on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps. If you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.